Yesterday, VU2KOZ Belgam Net Control told me that VU2PNU, another Belgam Net Controller, is using VRLA batteries for his radio. Uh, the advantage he told me was that as it is run on batteries, the, no the noise level is very low in the radio so that he can even hear weak stations. One of the problems I face in my radio is that I am using an SMPS or uh, switch mode power supply. I tend to have very high noise level in my radio. Typically the noise level in my radio on 40 meters is uh, S9, sometimes S7 and during lucky times sometimes I may have S uh, four or even three noise levels especially when there is a power power failure from the grid when most of the equipments around suddenly go out then the noise level abruptly drops only to return because they will start using other SMPS typically the uh, inverters for power supply or solar power supply so Noise level is a great problem facing all amateur radio operators these days. If you operate on batteries, there is an advantage. At least the noise from your own SMPS will be reduced. And that's why he suggested VRLA or wall regulated lead acid battery for me. View to PNU, he told me, is using 65 ampere hour VRLAs with charger used at night and then during whole day the battery will be giving backup for his radio as well as his linear amplifier so that's a great advantage with a 65 h vrla battery which he is using this is a sample vrla battery uh, which i found in my almira this i had salvaged from an emergency light uh, this is uh, a lower voltage and lower ampere hour, uh, just 6 volt and 4.5 ampere hour. Obviously, I cannot use it for my um, HF radio. Maybe I'll be able to use it uh, for a VHF handy on a uh, portable base operation and not like uh, usually when you take the handy out and uh, operate. This is not suitable. You have to have a battery in that or a battery case with uh, uh, AA batteries inside. So this is a VRLA battery. I will read the instructions. There are a lot of instructions given here. That is constant voltage charge cycle use. That is 7.25. This is a 6 volt battery. 7.25 to 7.45 voltage, 25 degree centigrade. That is the rating. An initial current should be less than 1.35 ampere, that is charge current. For standby mode, uh, you have 6.75 to 6.90 volt. And there are a few cautions for VRLA batteries, unlike the usual flooded lead acid batteries, you have certain cautions. In uh, the difference basically is VRLA is wall regulated. The gases which are produced inside are kept there itself and they recombine with the help of a catalyst. Uh, the lead plates in VRLA batteries have additional calcium as a catalyst which help combination of the gases. Basic chemistry of uh, lead, uh, lead acid batteries that when lead reacts with dilute sulfuric acid, hydrogen is produced. So this hydrogen is vented out in usual flooded lead acid batteries and it comes as um, gases and along with that some sulfuric acid fumes also might come that's why you have a smell in a closed room if you keep a usual flooded lead acid battery. I do have this problem with my inverter where I am using tubular flooded lead acid batteries because they are less costly than this uh, sealed lead acid batteries these so-called sealed maintenance free lead acid battery 
Uh, these are called sealed lead acid batteries also and uh, sometimes SMF sealed maintenance free batteries because in usual flooded lead acid batteries as the wind gives out uh, gases along with that uh, there is some evaporation of water and the level of electrolyte comes down uh, frequently in a standard flooded lead acid battery. So you are supposed to monitor both the specific gravity. You will have some specific gravity meters on top of uh, standard tubular inverter batteries which you, you use at home and you can see the uh, specific gravity and water level in that and uh, you have to add uh, distilled water uh, at uh, fixed intervals so that uh, uh, the battery does not go dry up. There are certain cautions printed on this in case uh, you are using these batteries. Some are precautions for yourself and some are precautions for the battery. I'll read out. One is uh, do not charge in a gas tight container. That is because even though this is sealed battery, there is a wall regulated mechanism I told you. In case there is a higher gas buildup inside, usually the gas buildup is uh, taken care of by recombining during the charge cycle so that uh, there is no loss of uh, electrolyte uh, containing water. But occasionally, in case of overcharge or some other reason, the gas buildup can occur in this uh, sealed battery also. And then the wall will open. The safety wall, the so called wall regulated battery, uh, the safety wall in the lead cells will open and gas will be let out. So, if you charge in a uh, gas tight container, naturally that is not good for the safety part of it. Then, uh, uh, do not uh, overcharge, that is important for this batteries because if you overcharge, uh, there is a chance that uh, water also gets electrolyzed. Whatever little water is there inside gets electrolyzed and you know electrolyzed water will release hydrogen and oxygen. So gases can pend up inside uh, which is a small risk of explosion. Then uh, like any other battery this should not be incinerated or uh, thrown into the fire and naturally you should not put it into the recycle bin also it should be disposed separately and uh, suppose somehow uh, you um, break this battery and your hands are um, contaminated then you have to immediately wash with water so that uh, the sulfuric acid within it is washed away and does not cause harm to your skin this is another sealed lead acid battery of higher voltage. This is a 12 volt battery but of uh, lesser capacity. Uh, it is clearly written as sealed lead acid battery and the precaution of do not short circuit is mentioned here also because when you short circuit uh, the chemical reactions sometimes have irreversible damage to the battery. So any battery you have to be very cautious about uh, short circuiting. Uh, this is still another one which I had salvaged from a toy motor car at home uh, after it has uh, served its real purpose and this is also a sealed lead acid battery or VRLA. So how does this uh, VRLA batteries work? You know in standard flooded lead acid batteries which all of us use in our motor car uh, inverters and many other applications are uh, the two lead plates are immersed in dilute sulfuric acid but in these batteries like this it is not so uh, you see I can place this in any orientation whatever way you want in your equipment VRLA batteries are standard part of online UPS usual UPS uh, you can mount it uh, in any orientation like this or this because there is no risk of uh, spill of liquid from this. Uh, if you mount uh, in a, the fashion like this, the standard lead acid, flooded lead acid batteries, there is risk of leakage of electrolyte from that. That does not occur with VRLA batteries as there is no vent for um, the gases to escape in this. 
there are two types of uh, VRLA batteries. One in which the electrolyte is held in a gel form, that is gel type of batteries. Silica is added to dilute sulfuric acid so that it forms an amorphous gel. That is one type of uh, sealed lead acid batteries or VRLA batteries. Another type, glass, fiberglass is woven into uh, fibers, uh, that is a matte like thing. Fiber glass is woven into a matte like thing so that uh, between the fibers it can hold the electrolyte solution and uh, they are known as amorphous glass mat AGM type of sealed lead acid batteries. Both have their own advantages and disadvantages. Uh, I already told you that uh, because there is no liquid inside this can be mounted in any orientation. So that's an advantage for certain types of vehicles which are likely to have more uh, vibration like if you are going for off-roading then there is an advantage. So, so some of the higher end uh, car manufacturers or motorbike manufacturers use this type of VRLA batteries in their vehicles to give that uh, uh, movement stability not the physical stability that also is there in some of the electronically stability controlled vehicles also this is being used. In such situations, uh, advantage of uh, VRLA battery is that weight is lesser. You don't have a liquid electrolyte over there. So the weight is lesser and uh, naturally it cuts down the weight of the vehicle also. So some higher end vehicle manufacturers use sealed lead acid batteries instead of standard lead acid batteries. From the point of the amateur radio operators, sealed lead acid batteries or SMF are a bit more costlier than flooded lead acid batteries. But they are less costlier than the newer varieties uh, like lithium ion and uh, uh, lithium iron phosphate batteries. The usual charge cycles, that is uh, these batteries can have from 500 to 1000 charge cycles. And number of charge cycles is possible will also depend on the care you use. In fact, when I called a local supplier of uh, VRLA batteries, he specifically told me that Unless you are using a proper voltage regulated charging system, they will not give warranty. Why? Because if you charge with some type of charger and end up damaging the battery, then they are not ready to give warranty coverage for VRLA batteries. So charging mechanism should be careful unlike the all the batteries charging should be careful. There is a hazard even uh, if you charge a lead acid battery, usual lead acid battery, flooded lead acid battery, overcharging is not good for you. But uh, in this case, they are specifically mentioning that charging mechanism, they will come and inspect and this has an on-site warranty so that uh, if you misuse this battery, you will lose the warranty also.